presenting the amazing interplanetary adventures of Flash Gordon. Last week, Flash Gordon defended the Witch Queen Azura from the attack of the Death Dwarf. Tall, having proclaimed himself King of Blue Magic Land, offered Khan the Hawkman the command of the army if he would swear allegiance to him. Khan refused. Unable to find the hill with the iron door through which Flash and Azura had disappeared, Zarkov returned to Dale. She suggested that they free Khan and let him direct them to the hill. When Dale and Zarkov reached the iron door in the hill and opened it, they found Azura in Flash Gordon's arms. Zarkov hurried them out of the tunnel, killed the dwarf. Then he took Azura prisoner. These thrilling adventures come to you as they are pictured each Sunday in the big Comic Weekly, the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Comic Weekly, each page printed in full colors, is distributed everywhere as an integral part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. Now we continue the story. When Zarkov opened the iron door, Dale Arden saw Queen Azura in Flash Gordon's arms and he was kissing her. Dale's love was turned to jealousy. Ignoring Azura, Flash tries to explain the situation to Dale. You don't understand, Dale. I understand perfectly. Actions speak louder than words, and your actions barely showed it. It was Azura's last wish. I wish it had been. How like a coward that explanation of yours is. Throwing the blame on the woman, hiding behind her skirt. I'm in her cloak. I'm not hiding behind anything. I'm telling you the truth. My spear had just broken. We thought we were about to die. Don't touch me. And that's the way you wanted to die? Kissing the queen of witches? Please listen to me, Dale. I told Azura that I loved you and you only. Did you expect that to make any difference to her? Dale, darling, you know I love you. It looked like it when Zarkov opened the door. I've always loved you, Dale. And I always will. Love? You don't know what love means, Flash Gordon. It's Azora you love. No, no, listen to me, Dale. I hate you. Let me go. Never. Not until I make you realize I'm telling you the truth. Dale, I fell in love with you when I first glanced at you over the top of my newspaper in that transcontinental plane, just before we bailed out. I knew from that moment that you were the one girl in the world for me. In the world? But not Mongo. Yes, in Mongo or any other world we may come across. It was for you I returned to Azora's palace and kidnapped her. What? So that by holding her as hostage, I could uh, subdue her kingdom for you. For me? Yes. I intended to turn it over to you to rule. How nice. And what did you intend to do with Azora? Keep her as a souvenir for yourself? Don't be like that, Dale. Don't be like that. Why not? All the time you were missing, I was so worried I couldn't sleep. Wondering where you were, what had happened to you. Zarkov and I searched for you, risked our lives for you. And what were you doing? Making love to that witch. No, you're wrong, Dale. I tell you, I didn't make love to Azora. You were giving an excellent imitation of it. If you weren't making love to her, what do you call holding her in your arms and kissing her? The only reason I kissed her was because she asked me to. Oh, indeed. I suppose the only reason you've never kissed me is because I've never asked you to. But Azora and I thought we were going to die. Such chivalry. Dale, you've got to believe me. Why? Because I love you, as you love me. We mustn't let a little thing like this come between us. Azora isn't so little. And what's the use of thinking about it? Evidently, there isn't any use of my thinking about it. So we'll get Azora to prove it. Azora! Yes, Flash? Dale won't believe my explanation of what she saw. Tell her the truth. Oh, don't be a stubborn fool, Earth girl. You know that Flash Gordon has fascinated me from the first time I laid eyes on him. I've tried every way to make him fall in love with me and forget you. Yes, I know that. The only time I had any success was when I kept him drugged with lithium. Back there in the tunnel as he fought with the death dwarf, Flash declared his love for you. He said he loved you only, and he always would. He said that? Yes, and when his spear broke and it looked as though we were doomed, I asked him to kiss me goodbye. At that moment, you opened the iron door. Well, Dale, do you believe me now? I've believed you all the time, Flash. What? Certainly. But I couldn't let you know too soon, could I? <laughs> of course she couldn't. That is right, Dale. Keep him guessing. And I thought... Well, what does it matter what I thought? I was wrong. Now that we have that little matter taken care of, we must take care of our beautiful and valuable prisoner. We shall hide her away until we have Tal and his army willing to listen to terms. Meanwhile, Tal inspects the fortifications of his newly acquired palace. Aurora. Uh, let down the drawbridge. Hmm, it's a 
it works very smoothly. See that it is kept in the same good condition. Come, Roy, we will have a look at the sentry gate. Yes, Your Majesty. Mm, uh, the moat looks dry. See that more water is let in. Keep the level up to that iron hook. Yes, Your Majesty. Uh, what is that, Roy? They call for the changing of the guard, Your Majesty. Mm, good. Let us wait and see how well they do it. Out! Mm, post guard! Uh, what are the orders for this post? Stand guard constantly. Face the distance between the arch of the gate, pivoting always with the face turned looking outward. At any unusual sight, notify by bugle the commandant of the guard. Challenge all who draw near. If challenge is unheeded, start firing. Ah, very good. Relieve guard. Fall in. Forward. March. Ah, yes, yes. Very satisfactory. Very. Come, Roar. We'll go back and see that the guns are in order. Yes, Your Majesty. Mm. With my coronation ceremony at hand, I must see that nothing interferes with it. While I do not expect any treachery from within, I must take every precaution for my own safety. Yes, Your Majesty. Mm. You, uh, you may pull up the drawbridge, Roar. Yes, Your Majesty. Uh, guard, fire that ray cannon. Now the other one, at once. Mm, yes, good. That was well done, guard, and quickly. That is the way I like to see my men work. Ah, what is that? The alarm from the sentry gate, Your Majesty. Let down that drawbridge. Hurry. I'll see what has happened. Ah, sentry, what is the trouble here? There's a man running this way from the hills, Your Majesty. Now, give me the cytoscope. Ah, mm, yes, I see him. Why, it's Han. Han, how did he escape? I do not know, Your Majesty. No matter. I'll capture him again myself. Surrender! I'll cut you in pieces with my sword! I've got the drop on you, Tal. Put up your hand. Ah, Ray Pistol. Where did you get that, Con? You'd like to know, wouldn't you? Well, I've got it, and that's the important thing. Get down off that horse. Ah, ah. What are you going to do? As you said to me once, Tal, you'll see. You'll soon find out. I warn you, it's useless for you to think you can escape. My men all know you. They'll find you wherever you may go. Will they? I'm not so sure about that. Paul, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. You're so brave and mighty with a squad of guards at your back. How does it feel to be alone with a man who is more than a match for you? I haven't met such a man yet. Brave words, Tal, but it's an idle gesture. Out here I can kill you before your soldiers can arrive. That would do you no good. They will kill you on sight. You think so? Are you willing to risk it? You heard my guards acknowledge me to be their king? I heard your guards acknowledge you as King Tal I. Not their king. A soldier obeys his superior, no matter if a superior is wrong. I'll show you who's wrong. Put down that ray pistol. Not until I'm ready, Tal. I have something to say to you first. I'll say it quickly, then. My soldiers will be out here any moment, and you'll be a dead man. Oh, when I let you put me in that cell, I thought there was nothing left to fight for. Well? Now I find there is. What do you mean, Khan? I mean Princess Dale. She's still alive, and I'm going to take over the blue magic land for her. You won't live long enough. We'll see about that, you and I. We will? Yes. You were willing to make me commander of your army if I would swear allegiance to you. I see. You'll do that if I'll make the Earth Girl queen? No, I'll do it if you beat me in fair fight. You will? Yes. But if I win, Princess Dale will rule Blue Magic Land. And if I refuse to agree to your terms? I'll kill you where you stand. Uh, I agree. Then break your sword in half, and I'll empty this ray pistol. What is this, a trick? No, we'll fight with bare hands. Break that sword. Uh, very well. Good. Here goes the ray pistol. <whistles> now, Tal, put up your fists and defend yourself. This is a fight to the finish. <laughs> Another part of the hills as the three fugitives, Zarkov, Flash, and Dale, trudge along with their beautiful captive Azura looking for a suitable shelter and hideaway, Dale draws Flash to one side. Flash? Yes, Dale? 
Are you happy? Yes. Why do you ask, Dale? I'm not. Why not? I've been doing a lot of thinking lately, in between worrying about you. In fact, it was the worrying about you that got me to thinking. What have you been thinking about? About the earth. We've been up here in Mongo for I really don't know how long. Isn't it time we were going home? Just when we've got Azura captured and can take over the kingdom of the cave world? Yes, right now. Let's give up this conquest business and try to find our way back to the earth. I'm tired of risking our lives at every turn we raise. Well, we have we have had some thrills, I'll admit, Dale, but that's all part of the game. The game I don't care anything about, Flash. I'm sick of being taken prisoner and treated like a slave. I'm sick of going around in odd-looking clothes. I want to go back to the earth. Take me back. I can't take you back, Dale. I have no idea where the earth is. And even if I could, it's asking a lot to give up conquering this kingdom. I've got a winning streak on. I can't break my luck. If you keep on, you'll break your neck. Oh, Flash, darling, can't you see? This isn't going to get either of us anywhere, really. You and I are earth people, Flash. We belong on the earth. You're tired, Dale. We ought to find shelter soon, and then you can rest. Why, after you've had some food and sleep, you'll laugh at such talk. Think of it. You'll be a queen. I'd rather be a citizen back on the earth than queen of all this funny universe. Flash! Dale! What is it, Zarkov? A scout patrol. We have been sighted. They are coming down that trail ahead and will cut us off. What did I tell you, Flash? This is the end of it. Don't you worry, Dale. Perhaps that's some other band of men. Azora? Yes, Flash? Are those men part of your army? Yes, they are my chief scouts. Your friend Zarkov just noticed them, but I've been watching them for some time. They have dismounted. They are advancing on foot with leveled flame guns. Oh, we're doomed to a fiery death. Be brave, Dale. You'll we'll die together. Zarkov and the girl! And Flash Gordon! Shoot them down! Oh, soldiers! On your knees to your queen. Captain, the earth man has saved my life. He is henceforth your king, in fact, as well as in name. Flash Gordon and his friends are to be escorted to my palace in honor and safety. What? Do you hear, Flash? You are king of the cave world now. Do you really mean it, Azura? Yes, Flash. Oh, now we'll never get back to the earth. My queen, it is my duty to warn you. Warn me of what? The army remains loyal to you, but in your absence, Tal has seized the throne. These amazing adventures which you have just heard dramatized are only one of the many thrilling features to be found in the comic weekly section of the Hearst newspaper next Sunday. For besides Flash Gordon, you will also thrill at the exploits of that other young American couple, Jungle Jim and Joan Peters, in their breathtaking adventures in the African jungle. Then, of course, you don't want to miss those wonderful poster stamps, drawn especially for you by real artists and printed in full colors every Sunday in the comic weekly. You will see a half page of these poster stamps picturing animals, ships, American history, famous persons, flags, and many other interesting subjects. Each poster stamp is two and one half inches long by one and three quarter inches wide, six times as large as the regular three cent stamp. If you are not already saving these stamps, be sure and start next Sunday and become a full-fledged member of the new poster stamp collector's club. All you have to do is cut out these stamps each Sunday, paste them in your album, and you're a member. The official album of the Poster Stamp Collectors Club should now be available at all leading stores. So goodbye until next week at the same time when we will be back with another chapter in the amazing interplanetary adventures of Flash Gordon.